one thing I quite like about uh, automation rules is the ability to basically create these rules, uh, these automations uh, very easily. And today I was looking at this uh, interesting trigger to basically do something when the issue link is uh, deleted. Now, if you take a look at this trigger here, the name of the trigger is uh, issue link deleted. Now, I find this quite interesting. Let us say you have a dependency between two issues. Let us say one issue is blocking the other issue. And uh, when that dependency is maybe uh, resolved or maybe, maybe the link is deleted, uh, you want to do something. Now, this can be really useful in uh, real life examples where uh, you want uh, to basically notify someone that uh, the issue is no longer blocked. It is okay to have uh, this blocking dependency because uh, maybe you are waiting for the other team to deliver something and then you can of course continue your work. But in cases where let us say you want to change the dependency type to something else. Let us say it is no longer blocking um, or maybe you just want to delete it uh, without creating a new one. You can basically not notify someone. So let us see how it works. So I'll save it and then I'll uh, um, maybe I'll, I'll maybe uh, create uh, a comment. I quite like adding comment because I think that that really makes things uh, easy to see. But you can always you can always send a message to your slack or maybe an email now let us say so i think we don't really really want to add a condition we basically want to take an action now i can uh, i can send an email which is fine but why not send why not just uh, comment on the issue now to comment on the issue you can uh, you can simply add a comment which is static comment but i always prefer using dynamic comments for example if you want uh, you can uh, you can uh, add a comment here that talks about the links but uh, uh, you can first test how it works so for example you can add a comment here called uh, issue link deleted so i think this is fine for the time being but uh, we'll name it as uh, maybe I always try to name my automation automation rules without any spaces because I also want to export them and keep them or version control them. I talked about it how to do it. So maybe your trigger your automation rule rule could be issue link deleted. Not very creative name. It is a creative name, but uh, nothing great about it. So let us see how it works. And by the way, when you add a new new uh, issue link deleted trigger, you can further add uh, checks. But right now, I think uh, this will only work when the link type is of link is of type blocks. So let us uh, let us take a look at how it works. I will probably find an issue where I have a dependency of type block. So let us say I think this looks good. So we have an issue here called bug and it is uh, blocking or it is blocked by another issue called AN46. So let us uh, remove the remove the link and it will ask me are you are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Thank you. Delete and uh, hopefully it will do something. Hopefully it will uh, it will uh, add a comment. Let us let us uh, refresh the page because uh, these automation rules they take uh, sometimes a few seconds uh, to, to to basically do something so no comment has been added so far let me uh, go back to the audit log so if i oh, so there is something i mean it says success so it did something so it says that destination issue issue and deleted okay comment on issue so let me also take a look at N46. So let us take a look at uh, both of them or maybe the comment was added or maybe I was a bit too uh, impatient to to wait for the rule to finish. So yeah, I think I can see a comment. It is coming up. When you are working on cloud, you have to wait for the whole issue to load completely. 
So it says it should be incur deleted. And uh, if I go to BT42, not 42, 28, why 42? Come on, it is 28. So here also, oh no, there is no comment here. So I think the comment was added uh, on uh, on this issue from where you actually initiated the uh, uh, the I'm just trying to figure out. Okay, so we were talking about BT28 and uh, the comment is added on the issue that was blocking it. So let us wait for, let me just refresh the issue one more time. Yeah, so that is correct. So when I look at the automation rule, what it did, it is basically, um, uh, I'll probably uh, try to add a comment here. So it says, uh, is blocked by okay rule executes when an issue is unlinked from another issue okay issue will always refer to the source issue so if issue a is blocked by issue b this rule will execute on issue b to access issue a use the destination uh, issue okay i think uh, makes sense so basically when we were looking at the issues we removed the issue from uh, uh, bt28 which is issue a because it was blocked by uh, an46 which is which is issue b so as per the description of the rule the rule will execute on issue b so we but i think uh, you can also do something with the uh, destination issue the other issue so uh, it make, makes sense i think uh, in the beginning you just need to figure out uh, and understand how the rule works and today I just wanted to quickly show you that you can also listen for uh, or you can basically trigger the rules when the issue link is uh, deleted. And that is all I wanted to talk about in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today. Thank you very much.